Hi, I'm going to quickly show you how to do a time series forecast using Excel, where we're going to be able to forecast seasonality and the trend. Also using some 95% confidence bands for our forecast. As you see here, we have our data, which is highly seasonal. And then we have a growth factor here where you see it growing. And we can also see that the forecast is here, which expands about 14 days out with these confidence intervals. So let's get started. So here's our actual data. And then let's look at our deliverable. So our deliverable is we want to forecast the website boom because we're looking at web page views. And we have an increase that increased in the past month. Management wants you to forecast the next 14 days. Also, they want to know what is the seasonality in the data. And then a deliverable is going to be insights from the data. So let's get started. So the first thing I would do here is let's visualize our data. So let's just click those two columns because all we have is our page views and a date. I'm going to go to insert and I'm going to go to recommended charts and I'm just going to choose that first chart and we can just take a quick look at our data and we can see that there definitely is a big boom here in the last month or so looks like around the end of September where we see this pop and it's growing. Um, they want it to forecast 14 days out and I think that's very good because Excel does not do very good with long forecast and in and, and this particular situation you don't want to forecast too far out because obviously something is driving that boom and we don't know how long it's going to grow so 14 days or around 10 days i think sounds pretty normal so once we have our graph let's go and get our seasonality i'm just going to name this column seasonality and o and use equals and forecast and I'm going to use seasonality here and it's going to take the values in the timeline so our values are just going to be all of these so I'm going to capture all of these control shift and down and then the next part is going to be timeline so I'm just going to go over and I already know that it's going to be A2 to A299. And now I'm going to use the, I can complete this, but just to show you a different way of seeing this, you can click insert function and we can already see what our seasonality is, which is seven. And using the insert function can give us a better kind of idea of where we can see the arguments a little bit better. So I'm just going to click OK. And now we can see our seasonality is 7. So we already have the first part of our request. And we also are going to use that seasonality value within our forecast. So I want to create the forecast. I don't want to put it directly under my page views. I want to create a new column. And the reason I'm doing that is because when we create a visual here, we'll have a separate legend for that. So let's create our forecast. And I'm going to do that there. Then I'm going to travel all the way down to the end of our data. So control shift and down. And we want to be able to forecast 14 days out. So I'm just going to take my consecutive dates and I'm going to pull that down, you know, maybe to the 11th or so and I'm going to pull one day out uh, it doesn't exactly need to be 14 days we can see it goes from 300 to about 315 and we're going to be able to put our forecast here and like I said because that's going to allow us to visualize so we're going to use our equals and forecast and then we're going to forecast with the first one here which is exponential smoothing algorithm that we're going to use so we're going to click into that and you can see there's a target date so we want to be able to forecast the date that we don't have and our data only goes up to the 25th so we're going to forecast the 26th um, now we know our values is 
B2 to B299. I'm just going to use that insert function so you can see everything. So we're going to target A300. We're going to go to B2 to B299. So we're going to use that semicolon. 299. Timeline, we already know, is A2 to A299. And you can see we already have a value there. So we can hit OK. Now we don't, oh, we need to make sure we add our seasonality, which is seven. And usually Excel will pick up automatically on that seasonality using the same method we had. But, you know, for practice, we added it. And data completion, we know we don't need. So we hit OK. So now all I want to do is double click this and I will have my forecast here. So now that I have a forecast, let's just quickly uh, visualize this. I'm going to go to those three rows and press Control, Shift, and Up a couple times. I'm going to go to Insert, Recommended Chart. And now you can see we have our graph here, which has our forecast at where we should be. So now... We know we want the confidence bands too. So what we're going to do is create a confidence interval, upper and lower. So I'm going to go one, two, and three out, and I'll show you why. And I'm going to call this our confidence. And then I'm going to go all the way back down to our forecast. So control shift and down. And now we have our forecast here. So we want to be able to get the confidence here. So remember we have one, two, three, and out in that F column. So I'm going to use equals here and forecast again. And then you can see we have our confidence here. Almost a similar type of setup as we had for the forecast. So I'm going to go up to our function just because it's easier. And we want to do target is A300. Values B2 to B299. A2 is our timeline. A2 to A299. Now, our confidence level is from 0 to 1. We want a 95% confidence interval, and you can see that is the default there. But let's just add it for our purposes, and we hit OK. Now you see we have a single number there. Let's click that down so it goes all the way to our end of our forecast. Now this needs to be added and subtracted to get our confidence bands. So we can go back up. Well, we can do that now. We can use this value, which is our forecast, plus our confidence for our upper bound. And we can use this forecast minus this number to get our lower bound. And now we can just drag that down. Now we have our upper and lower ranges. I'm going to press Control Shift Up. And now we're going to have a upper confidence. Or well, I hope I did that right. Let me let me control shift and down. Yep, upper confidence and lower confidence. So let's go back up, control shift and up. And then lower confidence. Now we have everything we need for our forecast. So I'm going to now highlight all of our columns, go to insert, then go to our recommended chart. And now you see we have more information there. And let's pull this out. Looks like we might have a little error here. So let's see what we did wrong. Let's go control shift and down. Oh, the, the, we don't want we don't want that confidence there, so we just want this one. So we go back up to insert, we go to recommended chart. 
and make sure we have our lower confidence. Let's make, let's get rid of some of these previous charts. So we're just going to eliminate those. And now we can see we have our upper confidence and lower confidence. The first thing I want to do is make those um, similar w colors. So I'm just going to highlight that in the legend. I'm going to go over where it's going to format that legend entry. And I'm going to make that also gray. And I'm going to turn that into a dash. I'm also going to do the same for the second ledge upper confidence here. Go over. That's already gray. I'm going to turn that into there. Now, one thing you're able to see is like this is a lot of data. And we're probably only concerned with the section that is in the last couple months, maybe from July onward. So I'm going to pull this down. So I'm just going to highlight this. So I just simply copied and paste that. And what I want to do is I want to get rid of these months or filter them so we can have a little bit better chart. So I'm going to go back up, control shift and up. I'm going to put a filter on this date. So I'm going to go to insert. I'm going to go to data and I'm going to go to filter. And then you can see I can just get rid of January, February, March, April, May, and June, and then hit OK. And now we can see that chart is a little clearer where we can see a little bit more information. And it's not so um, overwhelming with all the data points. I'm going to get rid of, just style this up a little bit, add my forecast at the top, add a chart title. And now we should be good to go with our forecast. I hope that helps you to understand how to create a quick time series forecast, 14 days. And you can, you can definitely style this any way you want. Then I'm going to expand it out a little bit, uh, you know, make it look bigger. You might want to filter a few more months if you wanted to zoom in a little bit more. You can always add a text box here with some information like I did before. But what we want to do is add a trend line. So you want to click on this particular um, actuals here. And you want to be able to right click, add a trend line. Because you want to be able to show the growth here. And this should give you a little bit of better look at your your trended data and your forecast and you can pass this on to management. I hope that helps. Please like and subscribe.